I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is yet to come, the Almighty. I greet you with these words of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserved for us in the book of Revelation. And I welcome you to our online worship service for Sunday, June 7th, 2020. This is the first weekend in the month of June. And ordinarily what that would mean for many of us, especially those of you who are students who just finished up your schooling this past week, it means it's the beginning of summer. And with the beginning of summer comes great anticipation of our summer plans. For many families, it's graduation parties, family picnics, vacation plans, fairs and festivals. And for our church, it's vacation Bible school. It's summer camp for kids at Wesley Woods and it's a summer mission trip for our youth and our congregation. But because the coronavirus pandemic is still lingering around, uh, many of these summer plans have been altered or just outright canceled. Which leads me to why I'm standing on this baseball field. This is the baseball field that my son, who is 12 years old, uh, would have played his 12-year-old Little League season on. And though we are still planning on having some sort of summer season with his Little League team, the All-Star Tournament for the Little League World Series has been outright canceled. And that's a real disappointment for me and for my son as he has worked towards this year of baseball from the time he was four years old playing t-ball here on these Little League fields. And so this is a great disappointment for me and for him and it's the same disappointment that many of us share as we have missed out this spring and now into the summer of many of our plans and celebrations of our accomplishments. Whether you are a preschool child who's graduating preschool or an elementary student who couldn't perform your play or your musical, and of course we would all agree that our hearts go out to all of the graduating seniors from high school from all over the country who missed out on those final months of their uh, senior year in high school. And so before I share with you my message from home plate here today, let's take time to acknowledge and to uh, congratulate those graduating seniors, those graduates from our congregation at Lebanon Presbyterian Church. We begin with Sydney Snyder. Sydney is the daughter of Kurt and Marty Snyder, the younger sister of Morgan Snyder, and also the granddaughter of Nancy Plymeyer. Sydney is a graduate of West Middlesex High School. Congratulations, Sydney. Next is Corey Roseski. Corey is the daughter of Bob and Heather Roseski, and the sister of Caitlin Roseski. Corey is a graduate of Mercer Area High School. Congratulations, Corey. We are so very proud of you. This is Trevor Hardisky. Trevor is a graduate of West Middlesex High School. He is the son of Jason and Melissa Hardisky, the grandson of Bob and Darlene Hardisky, and the great-grandson of Edna Stimmel. Trevor, congratulations. Then we have Anthony Guyon. Anthony's mother is Ada Karapetsas, and his father is Tony Guyon. He is also a graduate of West Middlesex High School. And I would also mention that Anthony is the grandson of Henry and Sandy Troyer, and pictured here as a young boy with his great-grandfather, Chuck Fennell. Congratulations, Anthony. Then we have Anna Myers. Anna 
earlier this year graduated from Air Force Boot Camp in Lakeland, Texas, and most recently from technical training at Fort Lee, Virginia. Anna is pictured here with her two sisters, Sydney Myers and Millie Myers. She is the daughter of Doug Myers and the granddaughter of Ron and Karen Myers. Congratulations, Anna, on all of your accomplishments and thank you for your service to our country. And finally, we have Kristen Hunt. Kristen Hunt is the daughter of Daryl and Sharon Hunt, and she recently graduated from Marine Boot Camp in Paris Island and is now off to Missouri to be stationed. Congratulations, Kristen, on all of your accomplishments. And again, thank you for your service to our country. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, beginning with verse 17. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. Hear now the word of the Lord. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive, both now and forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to God. Amen. I love the game of baseball. From the time I was a young boy playing t-ball, little league, pony league, even into high school, I loved playing the game of baseball. From the early 90s, growing up as a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, I love watching the game of baseball. And yes, in 2013, after 20 seasons of losing records, when the Pirates had a winning record and then went on into the playoffs to win the wild card game and then into a five game series with the St. Louis Cardinals and then lost, I wept because I loved the game of baseball. And now as a dad of a 12 year old son who also loves the game and who I've had the privilege of coaching his teams for the last 10 years, I love to coach the game of baseball. Baseball has provided for me great memories over the years and I look forward to many more memories to come as I continue to love and follow this great American pastime, the game of baseball. Now one of the things that I love about the game of baseball is that I believe it's one of the only professional sports, maybe one of the only sports, where the game begins and ends at the same location. And that location in the game of baseball is home plate. I guess you can say for the game of baseball, home plate is the first and the last. Let me explain. You see, home plate is the center of the game of baseball. Yeah, it's not at the center of the field, but it's where everything happens. It's the focus of the game of baseball. Every play, every pitch, every swing happens and begins here at home plate. The first batter of the inning, the leadoff guy, comes and takes a stance here in the batter's box in front of home plate. The batter awaits a pitch and hopes to get a hit so that the batter can make his way around the bases with the end goal of coming back to home plate to step on home plate 
and to score a run. And of course, the team that does this the most throughout the course of nine innings begins and makes their way ending at home plate the most, they win the game. Home plate is the first and the last goal of the game of baseball. Now the thing that I find interesting about this idea that home plate is the first and last in the game of baseball is that the same is true in our Christian faith. Let me explain. In the scripture passage that I read to you today, Jesus declares to the disciple John, the apostle John, that he, Jesus, is the first and the last. You see, these were words of comfort and consolation to John. John had been exiled by the Roman government to this island of Patmos, stranded, a castaway. And it's here that he receives this revelation of Jesus Christ. And as he sees Jesus in his fullness and in his glory and splendor all around him, John feels as if he's dead, that he's lifeless. And so Jesus speaks words to him to comfort him and to revive him. And he says to him, John, John, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. And this is comforting to John because John then would know immediately that, ah, yes, this is the Jesus who I first knew back when he was a disciple, a young man following Jesus through Jerusalem, learning from him, learning about the kingdom of God, and then finally following him to the cross where he dies an agonizing death, where then Jesus is resurrected from the grave and appears to him in resurrected form and gives him purpose and meaning in life, that he lived his entire life establishing the church and glorifying Jesus, writing the gospels and letters and being an encouragement to all who would come to faith, just as he did in Jesus Christ. What Jesus is saying is, John, I am that first guy that you knew. I am the author. I am the beginning of your faith. And then Jesus says to comfort him, and now I am alive forever and ever. I am the last of your faith. And what Jesus says here to John, and the reason that it's comforting, is because now John realizes that this same Jesus wasn't only the first author of his faith, but Jesus is the goal and the end game of his faith. And that this revives John and gives him life and revelation of life while he continues his life on the island of Patmos until he would leave this earth and be in the glory of Jesus forever. And so just as in the game of baseball, where home plate is not only the first place that each batter begins and seeks to make his way around the bases to return to home plate, the end game, the goal of the game, so Jesus is to us. Jesus is where our faith begins. Jesus is the one whom we seek to glorify as we round the bases of our life in however many innings or nine innings of life is for us. So that the goal, the end game of our faith in Jesus is to return home to him, to experience him in all of his splendor and his glory, and to live with Jesus extra innings. And so my hope and word of encouragement to you today is that whatever obstacles you are experiencing in this world, whatever disappointments you've had this summer or whatever struggles this pandemic has caused you, to be encouraged and comforted by the words of Jesus, that he is the first and the last of our Christian faith. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you, and may he give you peace both now and forever. He is the first and the last. He is the living one. He was once dead, but now he's alive forever.
and ever. Amen. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising, and I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me And every time I see you All your goodness shines through And I can feel this God song Rising up in me Hallelujah 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 Your love makes me sing Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah, your love makes me sing Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Your love makes me sing Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Your love makes me sing